All right, guys, I slept on this one, and I want to tell you why. I slept on it because my heart, as undead, unbeating, and broken as it is, couldn't handle another round of crippling disappointment. Not in 2020, not Elite 2.0. Come on. But we've done it. We've taken some time for ourselves. We've recovered from the disappointment of the Strife reskin, and we are here with the Turbine CS18, which maybe there's hope for, because this one is actually kind of a deal. If you consider the modern price of the Rapid Strike versus the $40 that I paid to pick up the turbine, by the time you add taxes from Walmart and these sneaky, sneaky $8 in C batteries that it's going to take to fuel this thing, uh, it actually breaks even. It's about the same price. Now, I think that the Rapid Strike is a time-tested platform with lots of amazing equipment for it, so I'm a big fan of recommending the Stratohawk, and I'll put a link to it down in the description box below where you can pick one up, as well as a couple of components that make it pretty spicy. The uh, turbine is here to stay. It's the Elite 2.0 version, it's got the swirl coils, and hopefully, hopefully full auto performance is where this line can shine. Uh, on the back, we just have boasting about the number of tactical rails. There's one, two, three, then four over here. We have a rev trigger. We have motorized dart blasting. And then over here, it says that there's a barrel attachment point. No stock attachment point, uh, because like the Rapid Strike, this has an integrated stock. Now, the Rapid Strike's integrated stock is adjustable, and this one looks really short. So that's going to be a stickler, but uh, it was only $40. It comes with an 18 round stick mag, which is one of the best magazines Nerf has ever developed and has become ubiquitous in a lot of different tactical gear and loadouts. And so hopefully, against hopefully, we're gonna crack it out of the package and it won't be that bad. So credit where credit is due, this bad boy does come with 18 darts. Double your darts is a treat and something that I always want to reward Hasbro for. In a world where there are a lot of complaints and a lot of shortcomings in this line, it's nice that they give you twice as much ammo. Be a lot nicer if it was ammo worth firing. All right, so let's load this bad boy up. Do we want to alternate darts? Why not? Also, I kind of like these little base plate caps. Those are pretty sweet. I, uh, it costs very little for them to do this. It's something we've been doing in the aftermarket for a while. I think that it's cool. It would probably be fun to rip off and paint a different color, but it allows the magazine to match the aesthetic. It's not amazing for certain chest rigs because this will stick a little bit, but this is a very low profile version. It looks pretty good. All right, 4C batteries, go. Can you guys see that? You can't make this up. Screw has stripped out without me being able to open it once. This is a proper size zero screwdriver. Maybe we could have gotten away with the size zero. Quality control is really leaving a lot to be desired up there in Rhode Island. I just don't even want to get into the minutia of price difference between actual stainless steel screws and whatever I guess they've been replaced with. I'm going to take this guy downstairs. I'm going to grab a flathead and see if I can't get into the battery compartment. But in the meantime, I want to remind you that in like the 90s, the screws that Hasbro used were pitched and threaded enough such that they were quality enough that you can still take those blasters apart after 15 years of rust and grind. Hi guys, so we're out here bringing the uh, turbine and in a second I'm going to give you a special treat. It's something that I didn't really notice because I'm so accustomed to the disappointment at this point, but uh, an interesting and unique double perspective. Before we do that, let's put a few over the chronograph. Let's see how close we get. Again, while competitors are shooting 100 FPS in the flywheel category these days, Hasbro seems to be lagging behind at their elite standard performance, which is anywhere from 70 to like 72, 74 recently. So I don't know what this is going to do. We just turned on the crony, but we'll see. In full auto, 69, 75, 68, 71. Ooh, did you catch that? The second, it can't keep up with its own full auto. Semi-auto performance with fully torqued wheels is getting you 70, and there was even a 75 in there. Once it started going full auto, it got bad. That is not ideal. 
Um, let's put a few of the elite darts down range, give you an idea of what kind of spread you're gonna be getting with this rate of fire, but it looks like it seriously lags under its own load. And these are brand new uh, Duracell batteries. So there's really just no excuse for dropping 10 FPS nominal under full auto load. Um, but here's some level shots. And while a few of them went to the left, uh, the entirety of that grouping is sitting right there at about 25, 30 feet, uh, which is uh, to be expected for elite blasters and elite darts at that FPS. I went ahead and I loaded up a, uh, I think this is an Adventure Force Pro magazine from the Nexus Pro with some Dart Zone Pro darts, just because I wanted to see how these guys would perform. Interestingly enough, it is cross compatible with the Magwell. Let's just see if this fares any better. Well, I don't want to pretend to understand it. For whatever reason, the pusher on the turbine isn't engaging this. Again, throw me a like. Once we get to a thousand likes, I'll do a modification guide for this guy, and maybe we can get to the bottom of it. Maybe the pusher doesn't have enough torque to push these darts fully into the flywheels. Maybe it's something to do with the tip being a little bit smaller, but I'll see if I manually feed one if that works. And I'm getting 30, so that, that can't possibly be correct. But I, uh, I actually want to do something I haven't done in a long time on the channel uh, before I give you my final thoughts, which is I'm going to throw this in here just for the purposes of argument. I'm going to hand the blaster to my best friend, Pat, and I'm going to grab the camera, and you guys can get a piece of my perspective. So Pat picks up the blasters usually right after I do uh, on video, and we kind of talk about them together uh, between the segments and what have you. And Pat noticed something interesting about the rev trigger. What do you got, buddy? Uh, so I thought initially that it straight up had a lock because we didn't have Oh, that's cool too. <laughs> the magwell in. And I was like, oh, it's locked. Somehow they managed to put a lock in it, but they didn't. It's just so bad that you have to like hard squeeze it past what most people would consider to just be like a locked position. It's like I have, you know, adult grip and it actually hurts <laughs> to use this blaster. How about that magazine release? You just I just saw that you one's also very bad. It's the same way. It's so stiff. It almost feels like there's locks that it's trying to prevent you from removing it, but there's not. It's just the tolerance is that bad. Yikes. All right, I'm gonna trade back with you. Okay, so I mean that's that that covers it. That's my opinion. That's Pat's opinion. There's other opinions that seem to be kind of more or less along those those veins on the internet. Most enthusiasts, people who know anything about foam blasters, have just really, really been sunk on this 2.0 line. And a lot of it's just easy ergonomic stuff. A lot of it's cost saving endeavors, uh, either for the purposes of aesthetics or materials. I mean, just a really how do you go from having some of the best controls with the best ergonomics borrowed from Tactical World and just make a killing with the number one boys toy in category for quarter after quarter after quarter and then decide, hey guys, what if we muck it up for pennies on the dollar? And I just don't understand it. I went into this thinking like, oh, this is a slight discount on the Rapid Striker or Strato Hawk. Maybe that makes it worth picking up. Like maybe this is a unique shell offering, but there's so many features on the Stratohawk that are better. Like you've got an extendable stock that's quite comfortable. You've got controls that make sense and are in a place that makes sense. Like it's just a better blaster. And so like there's a reason that like guys, like my buddies, I mean, even like Aaron and Kowski, which I guess you know them as Aaron Esser Films and P PDK Films, like they're not using these new blasters. They're using the older Instrike and Elite blasters because because they're more reliable for like throwing them off roofs and rolling around in the desert and stuff. Like it's just across the board. Nobody seems to like these. And I feel really, really bad for the kids right now who can't buy anything else because this just happens to be what's on shelves. So I don't know. I really hope that they turn it around. I'd like to see less elite 2.0 blasters and maybe some elite 1.5 blasters. It's like they're evolving, but backwards. Uh, definitely pick up a Stratohawk over this one. You might be spending even five, 10 more dollars, but you're gonna get just an overall superior product from an era where Hasbro still cared about their customers.
Don't even get me started on what Wizards of the Coast is doing now. Anyway, much love. Blast on, Drake. Ow!